They brought a basketball to the postgame press conference, kind of signaling all these seniors and all these guys who just won a football state championship. They're looking to win a state championship in basketball. Kind of a, a nice reminder that Texas high school football is done for the year. And there it goes. Back then, the Spice Girls had their first number one song, and they told you what you want, what you really, really want. Who's better to lead a student section than a big fella in Daisy Dukes? <laughs> That's Jacob Granado. He's a former Midland High Bulldog and a defensive tackle for the Falcon football team. And he likes short shorts. Four brothers, all college athletes with enough newspaper clippings to fill a room. But one story sticks out above the rest. Now before we get too ahead of ourselves, just know that we skipped a few chapters. It's time to go back to high school. We're in an arena. There's a couple balls flying around. The objective is to get the ball in the hoop. This is a lot like basketball. In France, everybody knows it's LA. But in America or whenever I'm going to another country, everybody call me Hall. Get it? So what is the first thing you're going to do after winning state championship? <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to follow that one up? And after all that, they were not going back to Hooters. That was a bad decision. Monahan's got off to a really fast start in these highlights. I'm going to get out of the frame and show you what's going on behind me. I'm out here by myself. Now, the Nunez boys recently lost their father, Domingo Nunez, who suddenly passed away from a surprise bout with cancer this week. In this game, Isaiah Nunez balled out. Coach Clint Hartman says it was the best he has seen and he provided these stats to us. Nunez finished with 21 tackles. Odessa College man hosting Clarendon. Now, the Clarendon men wearing, dare I say it, sleeves. And of course, we talked to a few of these local coaches. You're going to get their reactions coming up tonight at 5 and 10. But for now, reporting from an empty room with a plan in hand, Peter Terpstra, Local 2 Sports. Avery McKinney is a brute with the ball. After the district title and the playoff win, the cheers, the buckets, and when the clock runs out, <laughs> McKinney makes magic with the mic. What so proudly we held at the twilight. We had just finished our game, and the varsity was about to play, and the track broke, and so they were all like frazzled about what they were going to do, and all my friends were like, Avery, go do it, and I was like, Pfft. No, I'm a freshman, like that's crazy. And so I went up there and I said, um, I'll do it. And they were like, are you sure? And I was like, I guess so. And so I just did it and I've been doing it ever since. And the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting. I know one time the, the mic didn't work and people were all like, oh, the mic. And we were like, she doesn't need the mic, <laughs> let her go. You might see dad on the sidelines making a highlight video, Mom in the Stands, and you'll find her brother Evan nearby. When he was younger, he had to come to the games with like big shooting headphones, like big headphones. Evan McKinney has autism. The noise used to bother him, but now he's happy to hear his sister bring down the house. He's so inspiring to me, and whenever I go up there and I see him in the stands, with his little hand on his heart. It's just so, it's so special to me to see that. Plenty hear McKinney's music every game. Maybe it's Evan's ears that mean the most. Kindergarten is when I really started noticing around being around all the other kids and, you know, they would stare at me some, but wasn't really a big deal. But I finally noticed that, oh wow, I don't have hands. There are a couple of things I can't do, like tie my shoes or my pants or whatever, but nothing major. It's just a sort of never give up mentality. And I've got a lot of great guys surrounding me and you know, they encourage me all the time. And it's, uh, it's, they just make it easy. I try to use my shoulders a lot more. Um, I get down a little lower than what most people would to try to make up for that, you know, get up under their shoulder pads instead of grabbing at it. It definitely is an awesome feeling, but it's not really anything special, in my opinion, being out here and doing it.
before he started nearly every game as a senior. Effort, blocking out, just because you catch it. Jawan Packard played for his Uncle Chris at Midland League. It's just a family passion. He has a little pull-up jump shot. Kind of looks like uh, he's not dunking the ball, but he kind of looks like Jordan. 500 shots. My highest is 83%. Shoot at a higher arc. And when you shoot at a higher arc, you have a higher percentage of hitting the goal because when you shoot flat, then it becomes more elliptical. I can't really explain it. Packer finished up his hoops career this month, but now... Call the Robo Junkies. He's just getting started. I've seen BattleBot so many times. <laughs> Packer is at his best oh, in yeah, this yeah. arena. It's definitely mid-range. <laughs> It's not a three-point shooter like some teams. Just so you know, this is more than a game. Each robot costs around $10,000, and it's competitive. We're in an arena. There's a couple balls flying around. The objective is to get the ball in the hoop. This is a lot like basketball. This piece right here will suck the ball in. There are plenty of rules. Two teams. In the last 30 seconds is called end game. Take your shot and put up the points. While the basketball team battles for best in the district, he's fighting to be the best in the world. Yes, sir. I, I won. Yes, sir. I have a trophy at home. <laughs> Packers packed his bags for the world championships twice already, and he was one of five people his age and division to win a world title last year. Faster, because uh, before this thing lifts up in about five seconds. I've been wanting to go there since I was 10. MIT is not uh, something that gets thrown out very regularly. An 18-year-old from West Texas has his sights set on Boston. He's in the admissions process with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, far away from his father, Glenno. My parents were separated when I was a young age. Seeing a smile on his face just really puts a good spot in my heart. I like that feeling. A Midland man and his machines, hoping to leave a lasting legacy along the way. Shooters shoot, and Crane's John Esquivel lets it rip. His teammates call him John John, and he has a developmental disability. But when you see him hit the hardwood... Basketball-wise, he doesn't have one. That's what I tell everybody. His favorite part, take a guess. Shoot threes and pass them. <clears throat> you like to shoot threes? Yeah. He spent three seasons on JV before he got his chance to join the varsity his senior year. And his team is quick to feed him the rock, like when Crane hosted its home tournament in late November. Entire student body's here. It's his birthday, and uh, we're beating Odessa High, and he's in the game, and the, he hits a shot at the buzzer. I mean, he lets it go, the buzzer goes off. As soon as the shot goes in, the entire student body sings him happy birthday, and it was it was just one of those moments that, as a coach, you'll you'll never forget. And we've had some coaches say, oh, "Coach, we'll let him shoot it," and I'll say, "You don't you don't have to, Coach. He's he's going to get his shot off." A quick shot and a quicker smile. He lights up his team like a scoreboard. Hey John, how many points you got? I have 51. <laughs> He just pats his stats. He's so full of life, and all he wants to do is play basketball. I mean, he lives it and breathes it. If we could bottle that up and keep it and just give it to every crane, golden crane that we ever had come through the doors, I mean, it would just, my job would be so easy, you know what I mean? So what would you do if you had a shot? If you were anything like John John, you'd take it. Hey guys, don't forget to fill out your bracket for the March Madness office pool. Smiley face. I wonder who I should pick. This one's gonna be tough, but I think I got it. Fastest 40, fastest 40. Woo pig, woo pig, woo pig. 60% of the time, Spud Webb wins. Every time. I think a jackrabbit could outrun a golden flash, whatever that is. Easy. Winner. Fill out those brackets. We made our picks. Now you make yours, but let's get one thing straight. You will be wrong. And that's the best part. No one knows how the bracket will bust. NCAA Tournament Basketball starts at 11.15 a.m. Central Time tomorrow. Best time of the year. Your local two sports. 
Falcons up, baby. Falcons up. What's up, baby? Falcons up. Falcons up. Number one. Number one. It could be the return you've been waiting for. We live in a world full of body shaming, protein powders, and vitamin packed juicy juice. And in that world, you also have the big nasty. He's putting himself out there by putting on the Daisy Dukes. Jacob Granado, don't ever change. You're perfect. You get a look at the big nasty tomorrow night at UTPB at the basketball game. He runs the show for the student section, and we might have a mega matchup going down in Odessa. Number 18, UTPB will play number eight, West Texas A&M, in a game between the top two ranked teams in the conference. That one, 7:30 p.m. at the Falcon Dome. These kind of games, your best players need to play good, and if our best players play good, we're going to be fine. Um, if uh, if they don't, then it's going to be a struggle. But these kind of games, when you're, you know, they're going to be right down to the to the edge. It's going to be one possession game, and then at the end of it in March, you're going to look at it. You know, the conference champions going to win it by one game. I'm expecting it to be really, really, really live in here. <laughs> Hopefully, like the Tarleton game last year, man. We just want it to be a packed house so we can feel that energy from the crowd and get this thing. Going. They're going to come in, they're going to try to beat us, you know, they're going to try to come in and, and, and take what we got. And we're not going to allow that, you know, because one thing about us, y'all know, the bigger the game, the bigger we're going to step up. So, you know, we're not, we're, not, we're not afraid of any challenge, we're ready for everything, and I promise you, on that day, we, we will be ready. Now, West Texas A&M is undefeated in the early season. The Buffaloes like to shoot the three ball, and they have preseason All-American David Shavlovich. He's the leading scorer in school history. And they know all about the Falcons after last year's championship run. We've got a pretty good team, too, but they're, they're a heck of a team. They were preseason favorites. They were top ten nationally. Um, they've got one loss on the year. Last 17 games down there, they've won 16 of their last 17 games. So um, it, it's something that we're going to have to play really well to be in the game, and then hopefully we can pull it out at the end. When you watch your daughter, you know, your kids, and they, and they, and they do something special, and they know that they have a great memory, well, these guys have got, created a lot of great memories. Uh, I think they made me 10 years younger, and the only thing I'm going to regret is we don't get to practice Monday. The Midland Lee Rebels are not hitting the practice field today. They are hitting the lockers, unlatching the locks, and turning in the logos because the season is over. Midland Lee finished the year 10 and 3, three rounds deep. He had plenty of players setting the scene this season. We're going to take a look at one of those guys right now, setting the gold standard. Midland Lee senior quarterback Colby Standard played wide receiver last season, and he made the move back under center for his last year at Lee. He joins running backs Josh Trailer and Avery Akbar as 1,000-yard rushers, and he finished his final game with 314 total yards and a touchdown. He made the machine go, and he made his mark, says coach. Colby Standard will go down as one of the top quarterbacks ever play at Lee High School. We have three 1,000-yard rushers. He's one of them. And when you have third and one, let me tell you something. You want him to have the ball in his hand. Um, he's a West Texas tough guy. You know, um, great football player, great competitor. Uh, that's probably, if I, if I had a word to, 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 to define him, I'd say competitor. When he, when he goes to school and college, he's going to compete. When he becomes a, a gets a job, he's going to become a boss because he's a competitor. And that's going to do it for sports. We'll finish it up after the break. We're going to change our pace a little bit. Finding the light in a dark time. Now, we're going to take this time to talk about a family going through some tragedy. If you followed Midland Lee, you know the Nunez family. Taylor is a senior playing for Texas Tech. Caleb is at Air Force. And Isaiah is a senior right now at Midland Lee. And they have another little brother on his way to play for the Rebels. Now, the Nunez boys recently lost their father, Domingo Nunez, who suddenly passed away from a surprise bout with cancer this week. Soon after, Thursday night, Isaiah Nunez suited up with his brothers, the Midland Lee football team. The funeral is tomorrow. We send our condolences, thoughts, and prayers to the Nunez family. It's a pleasure to talk about the boys' athletics accomplishments on this show week in, week out. Midland Lee took on Lubbock Monterey Thursday night up there at Lowry Field. The highlight would start a little rocky for the Lee Rebels. Trey Manahan on the receiving end of a 75-yard just over the top bomb from Brylin Lawson Young. 20 seconds in, and Lee's looking at a 7 0 deficit. But Colby Standard, who's just been having a great season there at Lee, 
Who else has had a great season? Grant Brown. Check out the shake, the shimmy, the move, and he's going to break a tackle. And that block he got on the back end was incredible. That ties the game up at seven. Homecoming up there for Monterey, and Lee would make sure it was a sour homecoming. They do get a three-yard touchdown there to go up 14 to seven. But if you want to talk run game, you got to talk Josh Trailer, the Lee running back. Here he's going to go in from 21 yards out to tie the game at 14. Doing what he does, picking his spot, making a cut, and scoring a touchdown. How about them Rebels? Midland Lee rolls. Another one. 31 to 14. Your final. Lee is 4 0, and they will play crosstown rival Midland High to start district play next week. But really, this is the story of the game. In this game, Isaiah Nunez balled out. Coach Clint Hartman says it was the best he has seen, and he provided these stats to us. Nunez finished with 21 tackles, two sacks, two tackles for a loss, a pass breakup, two quarterback hurries, and he even scored on a two-point conversion. I think it's safe to say Isaiah and the Nunez family pops is proud.